Hey, it's Ed again, and I'm back with another one of those topics that drives me nuts. I was on the phone with a friend of mine today, and I don't know if he did it just to get me going. But then again, I don't know if he's bright enough to bring this topic up to do that. And a couple times uh, when we were talking about a house he was having an issue with, uh, airflow issue with, he used the term design static instead of friction rate. And that at times will get my eye to twitch because there's no such thing as design static. Uh, there is such a thing as friction rate. We're going to cover briefly the difference between the two. So friction rate is a calculated value. Friction rate is something that we are going to use the friction rate worksheet out of uh, ACCA's Manual D in order to do it. There is a bunch of information that we are required to gather, and we're going to do a very quick example of it in the next couple of slides. But in order to use the friction rate worksheet, we need to get some external static pressure information from the blower performance chart from the manufacturer for the furnace or the fan coil we're using. We got to calculate some component losses, which we can see over here. And I'm going to stop doing it over here because we're going to see it later. Uh, we need to solve for our available static pressure, which is a pretty simple process. But if you are in the habit of using rules of thumb or making stuff up, uh, you might not be following any of this guidance. So design static. It's a made up word. It doesn't exist in reality. I have people that want to argue with me on that, and I'm always up for a, a good argument. It was kind of a, a board game in the house I grew up in. I mean, we loved each other, but we, we argued because that's just the kind of people we were, and it was, it was fun. It still is in some respects. One of the most common ways people make stuff up, they use this 0.1 friction rate, which they'll call a design static. And it's, um, in most instances, it's actually going to come up with duct sizes that are uh, not ideal. There's a good way to put it, not ideal. And then uh, down here, I'm saying uh, it, it's not going to end up it being your static pressure. Because this design static, there's this misconception that if you size to this magic design static, the system's operating static pressure on the supply or on the return will magically come up with 0.1, right? And if we have a 0.1 static pressure in our supply and return after we design and install a piece of equipment, that's pretty cool. But setting a duct slide to a 0.1 friction rate isn't going to automatically give us a operating static pressure in the supply and the return of 0.1. My last bullet point there, say, hey, man, it's not true. Um, it might happen one out of 10,000 times. And even with that, I don't know, that's a stretch. Stop making stuff up. Do math. So, Real simple. This is a real quick, uh, we, we grab the blower performance chart like this, and this isn't for this example. It's just an, an example of a fan table or a blower curve, whatever you want to call it. And we can determine what our external static pressure should be in reality based off of our airflow requirement. That's the way that works. We can use this to estimate airflow also by taking an accurate external static pressure reading because this is how all this stuff kind of falls into place with each other. Got to pick an evaporator coil and we can look up our evaporator coils pressure drop based off the coil we select. Hey, how cool is that? And then we got to get filter information. And I don't know what filter manufacturer does this, but if I met the guy who is responsible for publishing the pressure drop at the airflow for the particular filter, um, I'd go beyond shaking his hand. I might even give the guy a hug or the, the girl a hug, which might be a little bit better, but that, that's genius. I think they should make, when I become king someday, I'm going to make that a rule. Every filter has to have the pressure drop at the airflow, right? No numbers that we have to do more math to figure out what they mean. Ultimately, we're going to take all of our components, total them up, and that is going to give us our component loss. We're going to deduct our component loss from our external static pressure in step one, and that's how we calculate what our available static pressure is. It's that simple. And step four is going to be not just our, I mean, what are these? 
floor boots or our termination boxes, whatever you want to call them. It's every component in the system, effective as well as actual length. And then we solve for the, uh, well, what's the critical path. The one duct that has the longest total effective length, because that's what our friction rate is based off of. And then over here, you can see that once we have gotten all the values that we needed, uh, we, we do a little bit of math because friction rates equal to available static pressure times 100 divided by your total effective length, where you can use the ACA wedge as this is referred to often, and we can determine what our friction rate is by calculating it. And now we have our design static slide. What a, I'm trying to keep myself in check so I don't have to learn how to beat myself out. Design static, generally what people will do is they gravitate right to that 0.1 friction and somehow magically, uh, you know, elves are, and I don't know, some kind of angels are going to make sure there's enough fan to move through the duct system. And it's not even the duct system that I'm overly concerned about. It's the whole process of if you don't fill out a friction rate worksheet, how do you know that your fan has enough pressure to overcome the pressure drop of your coil? If you're putting any kind of accessories in, like the UV stuff, you one register, one grill, one damper, uh, and, and throw in a filter. It's mind boggling. People are selecting filters that have large drops. So if you're starting at 0.5 and you have 0.2 for your evaporator coil, it's not out of the question to have a 0.2 with a filter if you're not paying attention you're already at 0.4 and we have a grill register and a damper that's 0.09 round we already used up all of our available static now it doesn't mean we're there's going to be no air coming out the other side but it's going to be significantly less than you assume so we already started off with a guess and then we're going to assume something after that which makes it just uh, stuff doesn't work and i want you guys to Design stuff is going to work. So it, my final thought on this is going to be very simple. If you make stuff up, accept the idea that stuff might not work, right? It's it's the way it is. I don't want to get into a long story, but my – and I already said it was my final thought, but I lied. You take a bucket, right? Go to Home Depot, and you get one of them orange buckets, and you drill five holes in it. Fill that thing with water. Is water going to come out of all those holes? Yes. Does the same thing happen with the duct system? People are under the assumption that just because I have a, a, a bucket, my duct system is a bucket, and it's got holes in it, yeah, air might come out, but at what volume and what velocity, and is the equipment going to be able to function the way it's supposed to? And it might not if we don't do the math. I think that's a, a good way to end it. So if you got questions, let me know. If you want me to talk more about this, let me know. If you don't want to hear me anymore, I don't want to hear from you. So uh, with that, uh, I'll catch you guys later.